after installation of Linux, you can still go back and create new Linux partitions or format partitions as long as you have some empty space. So we're going to look at doing that. So I have a system right here, and if I type in a df minus h, I can get a list of information about my file systems and space being used. If I do an f disk minus l, I can get a list of information about my um, how my partitions are formatted. You can see that I have three partitions. They are all regular standard partitions. SDA 1, 2, and 3, which are primary partitions um, with the old MBR style. And a lot of the machines still use the MBR style. You can have up to four partitions on your drive. And these partitions um, are either primary partitions or an extended partition. And in extended partitions, you can create logical partitions. So this one we have um, about 10 gigs of space that's still available. And so I'm going to go ahead and create a partition here. So I do f disk slash dev slash sda. So sda means the, well, a is the first drive, um, first uh, SATA drive I have here. It's either SATA or SCSI, but this is SATA. All right, so I'll go in the first one. And then the options here are a little strange but you can press M for a list of help options. So what I'm going to do is I want to create a new partition, and that would be the option N. Um, I can create my partition table in here by pressing P, and now I'm going to create one. So I do N, and I have three primary partitions already and one free partition, which I'm going to turn into an extended partition. So I select E. Now it asks me the first sector, and it defaults to the first available sector, so I'll just press enter, and enter for the first and last, so I'll use up the entire space. It says that um, this extended partition was created at 8.9 gigabytes, so I guess I only have 8.9 gigabytes. So now inside of this, I'm going to create a new partition again. Now because I am out of these primary partitions, I'm going to use logical partitions, which are only in the extended partition. So I select the first one, and I'm going to make this one um, maybe 5 gigabytes, so do 5G. And that will create the partition. Now I do P to look at my partition table. You can see that there is now an SDA4, which is my extended partition, and an SDA5, which is the new partition, the new logical partition inside of the extended partition. All right, inside of this uh, SDA5, uh, I'm going to make a Linux, uh, I'm gonna make a home directory. So the current type of the file system is Linux. Um, I can change the partition type by using T for toggle. And I will say five. I'm not gonna change it, but I'll show you what the options are. So L for listing it. If I wanted to um, make it a Linux swap partition, that would be 82. What currently is 83, a lot of the Windows stuff is over there on in the beginning. So like 7 uh, for the NTFS. And you can go ahead and change things. Um, anyway, I'm going to leave this one at um, 83. All right, so change from Linux to Linux. I print the table. At this point, nothing has even changed on the system until I write. So if I do W, it'll write and exit out, and my partition will be created. Now, the partition table needs to be reread by the kernel and for things to really take effect. So sometimes it's best to do a, a reboot at this point since it's saved. I can do an F disk minus L to list what the table is, and it will show me how it's formatted. Um, sometimes you have the uh, part probe command, and if you do part probe, it tells the kernel to reread the hard drives and to try to update its information about 
which partitions it has on the hard drive. All right, now I'm going to make my partition. So the first thing I do is use the MKFS. If I use a tab after that a couple times, you can see that MKFS can run by itself. But that's just a front end for all these other MKFS dot commands. And I'm going to create this partition as a ext4. So ext4. And my device is dev sda5. So I run this and it builds my partition. I could have done other options as well, like giving it a label. But I'm just going to show you the basic way of doing it. So that's just, it just formatted the new partition and it's ready to go. Now, before I can use it, I have to mount it. Now, I've decided where I need to mount it. And I wanted to put it on the home directory. Now, if I look at my slash directory, I can see there is a home directory right there. If I look inside the home directory, I can see the home directory has my Alice user account in it already. So, let's see what happens when I mount this partition. If I want to manually mount it, I type mount tell the device name, so dev sda5, and the mount location, which is home. Mount like that, and then I take a look at the home directory. I can see the home directory. I can see the home directory is now basically empty. There's a lost and found, but that's standard for any ext style file system. Uh, XFS, which is now uh, one of the defaults, does not have the lost and found directory. All right, but you notice the Alice directory is gone. So if I wanted to keep that, I'd need to back it up first and then put it in there. It's really still there. It's just hidden by this directory mounted over it. So I can type in U mount to unmount it. I can see that there is now in the home directory an Alice directory again. So I could either move it out or I could back it up, or I could do any number of things. So just for fun, let's just move it out. So if I go to uh, home and I move the Alice directory to my dot dot directory, which is a little weird. Now you look in the directory and it's an empty home directory. If we go down to the root, now you look, I can see that there is a Alice directory sitting right here. Now if I mount the uh, home directory, dev sda5 to home, and go into my home directory, I can see there is no Alice directory, but I can move it from the root directory into this directory. And now Alice's directory is in here. If I go back out of it, if I unmount the home directory and take a look at the home directory, then there is no Alice directory. I mount it again, and it should be back in the home directory. All right, so you can see that it's clearly tied to it. Now, if I want this thing to be mounted automatically, I go and I edit the etc fs tab table, uh, fs tab file. The FS tab is the file system table. So you do nano etc fs tab and edit that file. So what I need to do first is tell the device that's being mounted. So it's dev sda5. And then you have some white space, the mount point, home. Then you tell it the file system, so it's ext4. You tell it your uh, options, which can use defaults and just zero and zero. So that's all I need. That will make it so that it'll mount automatically on boot time. So I exit out. And not only that, but I don't have to tell it the device and the mount, mount position when I am, mount point when I am mounting and unmounting. So I can do U mount home. I can also now do mount home. And, oops, I spelled defaults wrong, so don't do that.
make sure you have an S on your defaults. All right, so I mount home and it mounts OK. Unmounting home, it unmounts OK, it can mount it up again, OK. I can take a look at the home directory and see there's an Alice directory and everything is working now. And that is how you create and format partitions on Linux.